I'd like you to grab your Bibles, if you would, tonight. I want you to go to Romans chapter 12. I'm going to modify tonight my time in the message because we want to make room this evening to pray for everyone in the house. We're going to be releasing the prayer team in just the next few minutes. We're going to be having what we call a fire tunnel here. Hallelujah. We're excited to anoint every one of you this evening and pray for you going into 2022. And then we're going to be going out to the courtyard for our potluck and our bonfire. Those of you that are watching online, I'm sorry. I wish I could get you here. It's going to be a blast. Romans chapter 12. For the next few moments tonight, <clears throat> I want to speak to you along the lines of the word consecration. If I want you to take some notes tonight. I want you to write it down. Consecration. We are about to enter into a fast unto the Lord here at Victory. It's going to be January the 9th through the 15th. That begins next Sunday. Next Sunday. It's a seven-day fast. Now, this year, a lot of times we've done a 21-day fast, but this year we're actually going to be doing a week throughout every quarter of the year. Does that make sense? So we're going to be going into a seven-day fast this January. It's going to be January the 9th through the 15th. And we've called it a fast unto the Lord. It's a fast truly of consecration. And I want to speak to you for the next few moments tonight concerning consecration and what it literally means. When we think about consecration, the Apostle Paul, when he talked about consecration, he took us into what he described of a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice unto the Lord is being a life that is wholly consecrated, a life that is devoted, a life that is set apart unto the Lord. I want to say that again, a life that is set apart unto the Lord, a life that is holy unto the Lord. Father, we thank you for the power of your word. I thank you for the anointing now of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father, for making me your messenger. I thank you for the honor and the privilege to step into a brand new year, Lord, of 2022, and to preach your gospel, Lord. I pray, Lord, that from this moment, Lord, that your anointing will so increase, revelation will so increase in this house, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation and counsel and understanding and knowledge, Lord, will flow in this house like a river, that your word will be so alive and electric within the hearts of God's people that their spirit man will stand at attention when they hear the word of the Lord. I decree it now in Jesus' name. Let's shout amen. 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 Romans chapter 12. Of course, this is the writings of the Apostle Paul. He's still mentoring us in 2022. Isn't that great? He's mentoring us. He's one of my mentors. He's, he's one of my coaches. Are you with me tonight? He's one of our apostles. I exhort you, therefore, brothers, and let's say sisters, through the compassions of God to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. There it is. Holy. To present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy, well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed formed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable and perfect will of God. Isn't that powerful? I want to read it to you now out of the same verses out of the Passion Translation tonight. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? What should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? Here we go. To, to surrender yourselves to God to be his sacred living sacrifice and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of the culture around you. Can we get an amen in the church tonight? Stop imitating the ideals and the opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. 
This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. What are we talking about tonight? For these next few moments, we're talking about a life of consecration, a life that is surrendered, a life that is yielded over to the Lord, a life that is set apart unto the Lord. Unfortunately, the, the word consecration, hmm, it's really not a popular word in the church of this age. It's not really a popular focus, but it's something that the, that the Holy Spirit is recalibrating the church to, that we must be a holy people unto the Lord. Amen. God is awakening this revelation now, even within His people, throughout all of the earth. Consecration is of the utmost importance to the bride of Christ because our King is coming again. Amen? He is coming. Our King is coming. Consecration has to be right at the highest priority of our life. Highest priority. Jesus said these words in John 14. I want you to take hold of this tonight. John 14, verse 15. These are powerful words. He says, if you love me, obey my commandments. There you go. If you love me, obey my commandments. It's interesting how this generation so struggles to come in line because oftentimes we just think that worship is songs that we sing. No, worship is actually measured by the obedient lifestyle that we come into and we actually yield ourselves and we surrender ourselves to the Word of God. Our worship is actually measured by the true obedience that we present ourselves unto the Lord. Amen. He says, if you love me, then obey my commandments. Amen. Are you hearing this tonight? Amen. Consecration is an act. It's a deliberate act of devotion. Consecration is a lifestyle where it says, I, I surrender myself to be given wholly over to the Lord, submitted unto the Lord. I give myself to the sacred purposes of the Lord. There is a sacred purpose when, when everything else is going amok and awry. There is still a heavenly and holy calling that God is calling his church to be holy, to be sacred, to be set apart, to come out from the world. Are you hearing me tonight? It's a lifestyle of obedience, a living sacrifice. It's one to be consecrated unto the Lord. King David said it like this in Psalm chapter 24. These are some very powerful and familiar verses. He cried out a cry of consecration like this in verse 3. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in His holy place? He who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart. He who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from God of his salvation. When he measured it out, he said, I understand what God is looking for. God is looking for a people that desire to come before him and surrender themselves. Yet they'll walk circumspectively and they'll look and say, is my heart being pure before God? Is my heart yielded and surrendered and turned over to God? I want to be a man with clean hands and a pure heart. That must be our cry in this hour. It must be the cry of the church that we desire to ascend into the holy place of God. That when we come together, we're a people that surrendered our hearts. We've kept our lives pure. We've kept our lives clean before the Lord. Make it your cry this year, a cry of consecration for 2022. God, I want to be a man that is consecrated to you. I want to be a woman that is consecrated to you, fully surrendered, fully yielded. What does it mean? Consecration means that you will dedicate your soul to the Lord. It means that you'll give your mind over to the Lord. If you're going to be a consecrated vessel or a consecrated man and woman of God, you've got to turn your mind over to the Lord. Your heart and your body belong to the Lord. We face such a major crisis in the church of this time because there's such a mixture in the church. What do I mean by that? There's a mixture in the church of this age that we want to be called by the name of God. We want... 
We want to belong to God. We want to be called by his name. But so many desire to be like the world. This is what God is calling us out of. And it's an issue of the Holy Spirit's ministry within you. The Holy Spirit's going to call you up. And the Holy Spirit's going to call you out of things in 2022. He's going to call you up out of things. And He's going to call you up and forward to move out of dangerous places, dangerous relationships, to anything that's carnal. Father knows what's best for us. Come on, church. Father knows what's best for us. He's there to protect you, to preserve you, to keep you. He's watching over His Word to perform it within you. Oh, glory to God. Now, Paul, the apostle, I want you to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 for a moment. Paul, the apostle, he addresses this situation where people want to be called by the name of the Lord. They want to belong to God. They want to be called by the name of the Lord. But they, they have a struggle with this mixture that they've not yet come out from the world. So Paul addresses it to the church in Corinth. And man, I don't have the time tonight, but the church in Corinth had some serious issues of mixture. So he, he had to keep addressing this. And I want to address it tonight because it was not only for them, but it was for every generation. Generation. I'm in 2 Corinthians tonight, chapter 6, verse 14. Are you with me? Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? Everybody say none. He's making a strong case here, strong point. What fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? None. And what communion has light with darkness? Well, the same answer. Thank you, Paul. It's none. What accord is Christ with Satan or Christ with Belial? Well, none. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? That's strong language. You picking this up? That's strong language. The church has nothing to do with these idols. None. For you are the temple of the living God. God has said, I will dwell in them and I will walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them. Or perhaps the translation in your lap says, come out from the world. Come out from them. Come out from the world and be separate, says the Lord. Uh, you got to grab hold of that. Be separate. What is he saying? Be consecrated. If you're going to be separated unto the Lord, it means you're going to be made holy unto the Lord. I'm called not only out from the world, but I'm called to sacred devotion unto the Lord. Come on, church. Come out from them. Be separate, says the Lord. Watch this. Do not touch what is unclean. And I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. We sang it tonight. I love how Cody led us into that. The declaration, I'm a son. I'm a daughter. I have a father. I'm a co-heir with Christ. I'm a son. I'm a daughter. That's what he's saying. Here's that promise. He's saying, church, come out from the world. Don't touch the unclean. Don't touch the profane. Don't touch anything that the Lord has cursed. And I'll receive you as a father and you will be my sons and daughters but then read the very next verse in chapter 7 verse 1 having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves are you seeing it let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God see there it is again it's the message of consecration it's the message that God wants us fully His. Fully His. Separated unto the Lord. Holy unto the Lord. You're a man that's called out. You're a woman that's called out from the spirit of this age. You are different. You are a peculiar people. You are a peculiar people. You are a peculiar man of God and woman of God. You don't belong to the spirit of this world. You've been called out. You have been washed. You have been cleansed by blood. You have been severed from the chains of bondage. Oh! Consecration. Ooh, church, I feel you. I feel you up here on the stage now. Consecration is possessing a heart 
of honor unto the Lord. I want you to write it down. I'm a man of honor. I'm a woman of honor. What does that mean? It means I walk in a lifestyle where every decision I make, I want to honor my king. I want to honor the Lord. I want to honor his family. I want to honor the body of Christ. I want to walk worthy of the Lord. It means you walk with deep conviction. If I'm going to be a man, if we're going to be a people that is consecrated unto the Lord, we're going to have a deep abiding conviction within us of no compromise. That we would be devoted. We would be devoted. The Holy Spirit will remind you, you belong to the Father. You're set apart. Why can't you be a part of that? Because you're set apart. You're set apart. You remember when Moses anointed everything with oil and with blood in the temple. Why did he do that? When we anoint you tonight with oil, it's not just symbolic. When we anoint you with oil and you go through this fire tunnel to consecrate your life and your destiny and your purpose of 2022 unto the Lord. When we anoint you with oil right here, it's not just symbolic. There is power and authority in it. Because when you, when you mark it with oil, when you mark it with oil, he said, Moses, everything you touch with oil means it's separated unto me. It's holy unto me. That's guys grab a hold of this. Grab a hold of this. Stay with me here. Moses anointed everything with oil to say it is holy unto the Lord. But Paul is saying you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You have become the ark of his presence. You have become the resting place of his fire and his glory. And you are set apart. It's so good. It's so good. I got to move on. I got to go quickly. <laughs> if I'm going to be consecrated, then I need to watch how I think. Write it down. I got to be watchful how I think. I got to be watchful what I allow myself to meditate upon. Don't you believe everything you think? Are you hearing me? Don't condemn yourself for everything you think either. Make sure that you cast down anything that is exalting itself against the knowledge of God to the obedience of Christ so that you never act upon it. This, guys, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about consecration. We're talking about being men of God and women of God in 2022 who stays blameless and pure before God so that when our King comes, He finds us ready. Ready. I gotta watch how I think. I gotta watch how I walk. Write it down. I'm gonna watch over how I walk this year. I'm gonna walk worthy of the Lord. I'm gonna watch carefully. I'm gonna be a watchman over what I speak. I'm not, I'm not gonna let careless words out of my mouth. I'm gonna watch how I speak this year. I'm gonna be watchful. I'm gonna watch how I worship. I love that Mary, and I think it was a spontaneous moment. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Was that a spontaneous? I felt like it. And I love how she just moved into that. When we talk about watching over our worship this year, we're not talking about watching over the worship team. We're watching over our obedience. We're watching over our yes. What we kept saying to the Lord, my yes unto you, Lord. I'm going to watch over my worship. I'm going to be a watchman over my life to make sure I'm being obedient, that my life is congruent with the Spirit. That my life is in sync and in rhythm, in rhythm and in step with the Holy Spirit throughout this year. I feel sorry for this mic. I'm really bathing it tonight and I don't know why. There's a fresh baptism on this mic, I'm telling you. First <laughs> Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. The, the, Apostle Paul, <laughs> the Apostle Paul writes Timothy. He says, don't let anybody despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in word. Watch it. In word. In conduct. In love. In spirit. In faith. In purity. Everybody see that? See, that's a relevant picture of consecration. Everything he's talking about right there. Our word. Conduct. Love. Our spirit. Our faith. Our purity. It's setting the highest devotion. Timothy, 
I don't want anyone to intimidate you or bother you. I need you to know God is calling you to set the example. I want to say it to you like this, Victory. We're a family. We're a body. God is counting, God is counting on this family. Sarasota doesn't even know it, but it's counting on this church. I'm going to say that again. Sarasota doesn't even know it yet, but it's counting on this church. What does it mean? That we set the example. That we be a people. We set the example. We let the Holy Spirit raise the bar and call us up to a place of consecration. A place of yieldedness, a place of being surrendered unto the Lord, a place of obedience. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 23. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. That's the ministry of the Spirit of God within you to make sure you are prepared blameless for the bridegroom when he comes. This year, we want to commit to something here at Victory. We want to commit to consecration. We want to make a fresh commitment to no mixture with the world. No mixture with the world. We've come out from the world. We're not even touching. We're not even messing with the unclean. Are you hearing me tonight? Say, I'm set apart. I'm holy unto the Lord. Go to John 15. I'm going to read out of the Passion. And I'm rounding the bend tonight. John 15. This is so important. I'm in the Passion Translation. Just a couple more portions of Scripture that the Lord is pointing us to as a family tonight. This is the key. Is it behind me? Are we ready? I am the sprouting vine. And the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield greater harvest. The words I have spoken over you have already cleansed you. So you must remain in life union with me, for I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine, it cannot bear fruit. So your life will be fruitless unless you live your life intimately joined to mine. You have to live your life intimately joined to mine. What is that again? Set apart. Holy. Consecrated. Verse 5, I am the sprouting vine, and you're my branches. And as you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he is discarded. Such branches, they're gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. But if you live in life union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you will desire and it will be done. And when your life bears abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my Father. Isn't that beautiful? Verse 9. I love each of you the same way that the Father loves me. You must continually let my love nourish your heart. You might need to underline that tonight. You must continually let my love nourish your hearts. If you keep my commands, you will live in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's command and I continually live nourished and empowered by His love. My purpose for telling you these things is so that the joy I experience will fill your heart with overflowing gladness. Guys, we're not going to let 2022 tell us what to do. We're going to be, be the people Dwelling in the vine, overflowing with joy, overflowing with gladness. Bearing fruit, staying in the love of God. Verse 12, so here's my command. Love each other deeply. 
as I have loved you. I want to pause right there before I read some more. Love each other deeply. Love each other deeply. Pray for one another deeply. Think of each other over yourselves this year. Love each other. Be authentic this year. Go deep in God and go deep with one another. Cover one another. Love one another. Intercede for one another. Fight for one another. When you see a brother or sister in struggle this year, fight for them in intercession. Fight for their life. Fight for their marriage. Fight for their friendship. Love each other deeply. Be there for one another. And this great love that's demonstrated when a person sacrifices his life for his friends. Verse 14, you show that you are my intimate friends when you obey all that I command you. See, there it is. You show yourself to be my intimate friends when you obey all I command you. I've never called you servants because... The master doesn't confide in his servants, but servants don't always understand what the master's doing. But I call you my most intimate and cherished, there it is, Cody, friend. I call you friend. There it is. There was, that, there was it, the word again, right in worship. For I reveal to you everything that I've heard from my father. You didn't choose me. But I've chosen and commissioned you to go into the world to bear fruit. Are you seeing the foundation the worship led for this message tonight? And your fruit will last because whatever you ask my father for my sake, he will give it to you. So this is my parting command. Love one another deeply. And it all builds up to these last two verses. Just remember, when the unbelieving world hates you. Y'all still with me? You need to drink this in tonight because I'm telling you, this is where it's at. This is where it's at. Just remember when the unbelieving world hates you. They first hated me. These are the words of Jesus. If you were to give your allegiance to the world... They would love you and welcome you as one of their own. How many of you know that to be true? Oh, yeah. The world's going to be faithful to the world. Are you hearing me? Remember what Paul said. Come out from the world and touch not the unclean thing. And then I'll be a father to you. Then you will be my sons and daughters. Therefore, having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let this grab a hold of you. If you were to give your allegiance to the world, they would love you and welcome you as their own. But because haha, you won't align yourself with the values of this world, they will hate you. I have chosen you and taken you out of the world to be mine. I have chosen you. He's chosen you, Sandra. He's chosen you, Kara. Michael, he's chosen us. My friends, beloved of God, you are chosen. You are set apart. You are holy unto the Lord. You are a vessel of glory and honor unto the Lord. This year, your life is going to be marked with the kiss of God. This year, your, your life will be so marked with the favor of God, with the peace of God guiding every step. And whatever happens, and whatever we turn on the news, and the world has changed. I'm telling you, I believe there's many things that's going to implode this year like a house of cards. And it's going to shock the world. It's going to shock the nations. It's going to shock America. But God's going to have his way. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Father's already promised you, I'll provide for you. Father's already promised you, I'll provide for you. I'll take care of your every, every need. You don't even have to worry. 
You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, clothes you're going to put. No, I'm going I'm to take care of you. I'm going to give you the wisdom. I'm going to show you how to prepare. I'm going to show you how to move in advance and where to be at what time. I'm going to have you in the perfect place. I've got you in my grip. I've got you in my grip. I've got you in my grip. You're going to be right where you need to be at the right time. And I'm going to be celebrating you and rejoicing over you. And I'm going to show you my loving kindness. I'm going to show you my faithfulness. I'm going to provide. I'm going to be your advocate. I'm going to war for you. I'm going to fight for you. I'm the one who goes before you and fights your battles. I'm the Lord of the breakthrough. I'm the Lord. I'm the Lord of the breakthrough. He's faithful. He's faithful and true. Before we transition tonight, I want to say over you again, church, you are set apart unto the Lord. You are holy unto the Lord. You are consecrated unto the Lord. This little buddy back here that's clapping in this message is just, is that Micah up there? Is that Micah Donahue? <laughs> he just went down. I don't want you to go down, Micah. I want you to go up. Everybody clap with Micah. He's been clapping through my whole message. I keep looking back there like, I'm jiving on that. <laughs> Way to go, Mike, Christina. We're set apart. We're set apart. You're a holy vessel unto God. You don't belong to this world. You belong to our Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Cody, I'd like you to come. Tonight, I may not know everybody in this room. I want to give you this opportunity. This is so important tonight before we transition to minister to pray for everyone. This is so important. This moment is so important. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted by anything. This moment is so important. When we talk about consecration, we're talking about being someone who is fully committed their life, heart, soul, destiny unto God. If you're in here and you've never done that, I'm telling you, tonight is your night to make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. This first night of 2022, I would just dare say there's probably not a better night than to give your life to Christ than tonight. 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 God loves you. I'm going to tell it to you very plain, but so beautiful. God loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. He wants to destroy the power of sin in your life. If you're in this room with an addiction, the Lord wants to sever that addiction out of your life. He wants to sever abandonment out of your life, rebellion out of your life, anger out of your life, confusion out of your life, depression out of your life. I could throw this mic around the room tonight and so many of us could testify of the power of the Holy Ghost that came in our life and set us free from that which we were a slave to once before. I tell you, this is the good news. Tonight, if you've never given your life to Christ, or perhaps you say, Brian, I want to rededicate my life to the Lord tonight. I'm coming home to the Lord. If that's you, I want you to just lift your hand so I can see you. I won't embarrass you in any way, but I need to see you tonight. Thank you, right there. Thank you so much for your courage. Hallelujah. I want to share something over the body. This is so important. When someone says yes to the Lord in a moment, that's when their heart says yes to the Lord, that's when the Holy Spirit does the work. Now we call people forward so that they seal that commitment and that consecration. But I want to tell you how it really happens. It's when you say yes to God. In the moment you open your heart to the Lord and say yes, there it is. There's the kingdom of God. Are you hearing me? 
I want to pray for you, sis, tonight. And I want to just, I'd just like us to ask us to bow our heads and close our eyes together as a family. Father, in the name of Jesus, now I pray that you seal this work. You seal this work by the power of the Holy Spirit. Cheryl, I want you to stand and put your hand right on her shoulder. Cheryl, I want you to stand and put your hand on her shoulder right there. Father, right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we seal this tonight. We seal this commitment tonight. I call you consecrated unto the Lord. I call you separated unto the Lord, holy unto the Lord tonight. I call you tonight that your sins are washed as white as snow. Your past is forgiven tonight. Simply just say, Lord, tonight, I make you my Lord. I commit my life afresh to you this night, Lord. You are the king of my life. I surrender my life to you, Lord. There it is. There it is. Fire of the Lord. Fire of the Lord. Fire of the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Isn't that beautiful? Come on, let's give God praise. Let's stand. Let's stand.